Looking for strategies to help you protect your portfolio in these uncertain times? Visit robblack.com. Robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Welcome in, Rob Black, and your money. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial, money investing, and more. It's earnings season. Got a good show planned for you today. Lots of solid content, including a very shocking thought that comes out of Goldman Sachs this morning about the future of the S&P 500 and what sort of ex- returns you can expect. More on that in a minute. Let's start by saying stocks are slipping after the six-week winning streak has left things a little bit overextended. Earnings season has been good, but not overwhelmingly great. We're seeing winners. Uh, we're seeing earnings th- this week from Tesla, Coca-Cola, and GE Aerospace. Investors are largely optimistic, but they're also very mindful that stretched valuations and the U.S. presidential election and the rising geopolitical risks with Iran and Israel could change things up quickly. The S&P 500 is gained nearly 23% year to date. Tesla sold 16,692 Cybertrucks in the United States. Average transaction, $116,706. Wow. It's really impressive, the number of Cybertrucks they're selling. And at full price. Only 3 to 4% of all cars in the United States cost over 100000 Chick-fil-A is releasing an, its own entertainment app. This is kind of goofy, right? It's the third largest restaurant in the United States, and it's got fewer stores than Starbucks and McDonald's. Um, it's got a beloved, beloved, almost religious-like feel to the fast food. And now they're going to introduce family-friendly content. There's been research showing that there is a connection between consuming content and mealtimes. Perplexity AI, remember the name. They're building a search product to compete with Google. It is an early talks to funding at a valuation of about $9 billion. If you do go to Perplexity AI, it's a great search engine. It's what search should be. You can put in... Uh, Great restaurants in San Anselmo, California. And it does a really, really nice job of showing you what's out there. And it doesn't feel as junked up with self-serving search results that Google gives you. Will this be the end of Google? Good question. The robotics market is hot, hot, hot. Goldman Sachs expects the total addressable market for the humanoid robots to hit $38 billion by the year 2035. Now let's talk a little bit about what uh, Goldman Sachs said. They forecast just a 3% S&P 500 annual return for the next 10 years. I don't think that's unreasonable. Is it going to happen? Probably not. But I think their argument is fair. In the last 10 years, the SP 500's had a 13% return on average. So the SP 500 are going to serve up just a minuscule return over the next decade that falls far short of the booming gains from the last decade. This comes out of Goldman Sachs' equity strategy team, citing today's high concentration in just a few stocks and a lofty starting valuation. The broad market index will produce an annualized nominal total return of just 3% in the next 10 years. So says research done by David Costin and his team. Goldman's bearish long-term forecast comes just as the SP 500 had entered its third year of the bull market, garnering a 27% annual total return in the last two years. Investors are extremely bullish on the notion that the economy weathered an inflation surge and will now have several federal rate cuts at its back. The Goldman Sachs team, they're worried that these returns have been driven by just a few stocks in the Magnificent Seven. Think of NVIDIA and Alphabet. And that a few stocks can only keep up their dominance for so long. 
the intuition for why concentration matters for long-term returns relates to growth in addition to valuations. I don't think it's unreasonable if they're throwing down. Now, a lot can happen, like the uh, interest rate cuts. There's something known as a CAPE, which is the cyclically adjusted price earnings ratio. The notion that the higher the starting valuation, the lower the future returns. The current CAPE ratio is 38 times, which is the 97th percentile. If you're just going on numbers, I absolutely, I agree with them. I'm not a quant though. So I'll also take a look at how like the United States is doing versus other countries and make my decisions on where I want to put my money based on issues along those lines. I would just be prepared for a best case and worst case scenario. It's something that financial planners do. They show you best case, worst case scenarios. Gold set a fresh record, oil's higher. Bitcoin's flirting with 70,000. T. Rowe Price says the 10-year treasury yield reaches 5% in six months on higher inflation expectations. That's an interesting call. Boeing's getting close to uh, strike, uh, settling their strike with their workers. Boeing and the union representing 33,000 striking members reached a tentative agreement over the weekend to end a five-week impasse. Union members still have to vote on Wednesday this week to see if they're going to take that pay raise and uh, end the strike. The United States is the economy that's lapping all the others in the world. In 1990, the U.S. accounted for 40% of the GDP of the G7 group of wealthy countries. Today, it makes up roughly 50%. U.S. economic output per person is 40% higher than in Western Europe and Canada and 60% higher than in Japan. Average wages in Mississippi, the poorest state in the United States, are higher than the average wages in Germany, Canada, and Britain. What's the secret sauce, you might ask? I think it's a large consumer market. We have paychecks, we spend them. We've got a lot of tech innovation and the world's most sophisticated financial markets, a what? deep labor pool coming from its first rate universities, as well as legal and illegal immigration. So I'm, I'm pretty happy to be in here. Am I aware though that Goldman Sachs is making a bold call, only calling for 3% returns a year for the next 10 years? Long-term average historically is eleven percent. I get it. I see what they're seeing, and I'm, I'm remaining dynamic in my approach. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. Big event coming up on investing in real estate and converting your real estate in retirement to what are called DSTs, Delaware State Trusts. How they work and why they work. You can sign up for the event coming up in November at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com in Palo Alto at the Elks Lodge. Looking for potential strategies to enhance your real estate investments? Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors November 14th in Palo Alto for an event exploring passive investment options with your real estate. They'll explore how 1031 exchanges into DSTs can offer opportunities for passive income and help alleviate property management challenges. They'll discuss the current real estate environment, trends in 1031 exchanges, options for for real estate owners looking to diversify and how DSTs can likely enhance your investment strategy. If you have at least 500 k in investable assets, this free event is for you. Exploring investment options with your real estate. Thursday, November 14th, 6.30 to 8.30 at the Palo Alto Elks Lodge. Space is limited, so sign up today at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. This seminar is ideal for real estate investors and property investors looking to improve their real estate strategy. Sign up today online, robblackshow.com. Thanks for listening to the show and for being a part of it for all these years. Um, it's really a privilege, in my opinion, to be able to do this and uh, talk to you about how to invest and how to grow wealth, how to manage it. Growth investors focus on stocks that are seeing above average financial growth. 
I think that's the way the show started. I wanted to beat Warren Buffett and kind of share with you how I was going to do it. Kind of learn through the years that's not the right way to do it. But I started just like you, um, out of college. My first lump sum of money came after a car crash where someone rear-ended me. And it wasn't much. It was, I think, $3,000. And uh, I knew that in my career, I, I was going to college to be a writer. And uh, I knew that that $3,000 was going to be important. So I invested it. And I was very good at it. Then I found some places like Roberts and Stevens who had some mutual funds that were tech oriented. I could have gone with Fidelity and Peter Lynch, but he wasn't techy enough for me, right? Um, long story short, having money in a mutual fund is, is lovely, but it's also frustrating. Because even though you may own NVIDIA in the mutual fund, you also own maybe Intel and AMD and your overall results you're like, I wish I just would have owned that one thing. Studies have shown that stocks with the best growth features consistently outperform the market. You're looking for earnings growth. Obviously, maybe those important stocks exhibiting exceptionally s surging levels of profit tend to attract the attention of most investors. For, I think, most of us listening right now, we want to see double-digit earnings growth. It's preferable. While the historical earnings per share growth rate for NVIDIA is 67%, investors should actually focus on the projected rate. It's expected to grow to 117% this year, crushing the industry average. So when you're looking for growth stocks, you're looking for earnings growth. You're looking for cash flow growth. Cash is the lifeblood for any business, but higher than average cash flow growth is more beneficial and important for growth-oriented success stories, especially for mature companies. Right now, year-over-year -year cash flow for NVIDIA is 303%, which is higher than many of its peers. That rate compares to the industry average of negative 14.3%. You're looking for revisions to estimates. This is where you would almost start to say the profile of NVIDIA starting to slip. Beyond great cash flow and beyond great earnings growth, you're looking for earnings estimates revisions. A positive trend is a plus. A strong correlation can be found between trends and earnings estimates revisions and near-term stock price movements. And NVIDIA continue to impress. I still have it as a growth stock. And I still have it as a buy on the dips. If that's your thing. It's a little broker virus for taking action on any stocks ever mentioned. Dow Jones is still average drops 300 points as Wall Street's rally to record highs takes a bit of a breather. I think that's to be expected. The Nasdaq up 23.2% for the year. The SP 500 up 23%. The Dow Jones Industrial Average up 14.8%. The SP mid cap up 15%. And the Russell 2000 up 12.3%. Those are all great numbers. And we can't do this, but if we could close the books and say goodbye to the year 2024, we'd all take it right there. Taking a look at the week ahead, it is earnings season. So as companies report what they say about their future, it's going to be really important. Companies like Coca-Cola, who you may not like, I like to hear their conference call. Nothing Coca-Cola sells do I absolutely positively have to have. So for me, it's, uh, I want to hear what are the consumers getting? I want to hear about inflation. I want to see where we're cutting back.
I want to see how different regions of the country uh, and the world are doing. So we're seeing some relative strength today in some mega cap names. A jump in market rates keeps putting pressure on equities at this point in time. That's all, all to be expected, in my opinion. Politics is going to be an interesting one. And I don't know what to make of this one. I, I My skill at analyzing politics is, is limited. But polls right now are finding Harrison Trump in dead heat across seven battleground states. And it's the battleground states that are going to be the difference. It's weird that's where we are, but that's where we are. One. Liam Payne had multiple drugs in his body at the time of his death. You're saying who is Liam Payne? I said that. Part of a boy band. And uh, I don't know why I bring this up. I, I think it's kind of a thought on. It's something I tell my children. Like, you've got a lot to live for. Careful on the drugs. Um, I know you're saying that's not the greatest parenting example that you could throw down right now. Kind of is. He was part of the band One Direction. Died at 31 years old. Crazy. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black. What's the best way to choose a financial advisor? Download our guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Again, thanks for listening to the show. Show dedicated to getting your retirement. I promise. If you listen, I'll do my best every day to bring something to the table. Stocks are slipping today. After the SP 500 and the Dow posted six week winning streak. Uh, I know it sounds horrible, but I'm okay with that, right? It's nice to go to lunch at the end of the day, open up your financial accounts on your phone and say, oh, look, this is how I'm doing. Um, but I don't need to be at a 52 week high to feel good about what I'm doing. I want to have good years. I want to have good three years, five years, seven years, and 10 years. Poor Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I don't know why I said that. Um, Broadcom reported a 47% revenue growth driven by AI demand. This is one of those stocks that is very, very similar in profile to what NVIDIA is doing. They just don't have the margins that are as attractive as NVIDIA. And you've seen the stock come way off its 52-week high. 52-week high of 181. Um, nope, that's wrong. Um, what is the 52 week high? 186. So it's currently trading around 178. Um, after their solid quarter, analysts raised the price target on that 47% revenue growth. Um, sanctuary wealth remains bullish on 2024, expecting the SP 500 to hit 6,000 by year end. As of today, the S&P 500 is around 3% shy of hitting 6,000. So what growth stocks are you going to find in a market that's had such a great run? Tesla Cybertruck backlog is depleted. It can now be ordered without reservation. The Cybertruck is open for orders to anyone, whether or not you are one of the millions with reservations. Tesla first revealed the Cybertruck in 2019. Tesla was taking refundable $100 deposits to reserve a place in line. It had promised a release date of late 2021, starting price of $39,900. The average one sells for $116,000. Pretty crazy. Private equity is cutting multi-million dollar checks. This is a problem that people see. Private equities, new investments, and exits have declined by 60% since 2021. Fundraising remains near its peaks 2021 levels. 
creating a tricky situation of what are they going to do with that money? High fundraising activity is private equity is now involved in more mergers and acquisitions than at any point in history. 40% of deals reported to the federal government for antitrust review involve private equity investors. That's up 10% from 2001. So private equity is got a problem where they got a lot of cash on their hands. And I was recently reading about how private equity has been involved in the trade businesses, like plumbing. I had seen a couple interesting ones where they were picking up dental offices, trying to uh, create efficiencies. But HVAC and plumbing? If you've ever used, uh, if you've ever had your HVAC repaired or replaced, it's not the best system so to be improved. PE firms across the country have been scooping up home services like HVAC, that is heating, ventilation, air conditioning, as well as plumbing and electrical companies. They hope to profit by running larger, more profitable operations. The growth marks a major shift, taking home services firms away from family operators by offering mom and pop shops, seven figure deals and eight figure paydays. There's a person who replaced my HVAC I had a 28 year old furnace at my home. And uh, his dad, his dad sold him the company. He's doing what his dad did. Now private equity is jumping in and saying, don't sell it to your son, sell it to us. We'll pay you more. Private equity is a high status white collar industry full of investment bankers, business grad, business school grads. It seems weird that they'd be sniffing around HVAC companies, right? Um, one of the quotes that I saw, though, was someone who had sold his, his company to private equities. And he says, I want to hunt, fish, drink beer, and cook meat. He sold his shop to a private equity company in 2022, saying that selling his company has given him greater peace of mind for his family. I get it. I get it. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Of note, the McRib's coming back. Why do I bring up the McRib? Do I love the McRib? No. Have I ever eaten a McRib? No. Um, I go to McDonald's about, in one year, about as many times as my lovely wife is nice to me <laughs> once. Um, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke, it's a joke. Um, but why do I bring up Chick-fil-A's introducing a nap and McDonald's is reintroducing McRib in November? It's because I want you to think of them as they have product. You can invest in the companies and that's their product. You know, NVIDIA is, what's their product? One area that I like to do uh, research in is the new GPUs. The 5090 is getting ready to be released probably in December, maybe January. It's a product. I want to see how the product compares to the 4090 from NVIDIA. I want to see how it compares to AMD. I don't need to do hardcore research. Other people do it. So, uh, but it is an interesting to watch from a distance. You can find me online at Rob Black Show, Twitter Rob Black Show, YouTube Rob Black Show. So some consolidation activity after record highs for the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. You're seeing a jump in market rates, keeping pressure on equities. I guess you would say that's kind of a negative, right? There's positives and negatives. When I have more money in cash than I've had in my whole career of investing, and that cash is getting a pretty good rate of return right now of almost 5%. So the S&P 500 is down one half a percent today. The Dow is down 80 basis points or eight tenths of a percent. NASDAQ's down one third. The Russell's down. Interesting, right? So all four major markets there 
or lower. 10-year Treasury ticked up a little higher to 4.16. One of the, my rules of investing that I started 25 years ago on this show, I stated that if the 10-year Treasury is under 3.5%, you buy stocks. If the 10-year Treasury is 3.5% or over, you buy bonds. That number is sometimes 4% in my mind. Sometimes it's 3.5%. Um, I'm allowed to uh, say different economic scenarios. Well, I'm going to have different interpretations. Disney's going to replace their CEO, Bob Iker, in early 2026, they say. Appointing a successor is a critical priority for the company. It won't have an announcement until early 2026 on that change, though. Successor failure starts at the top. Um... Iger is running into a big bit of a problem. My kids don't care about Disney. They don't watch the Disney Channel. They've never watched the Disney Channel. Uh, there was maybe a couple years when they were younger where they, you know, uh, bought into the whole Pixar world. But they don't really care. They can don't consume. The Disney Channel used to basically be a front runner for everything Disney did. Now my kids are on YouTube or on TikTok. So Disney has a problem where their content's not reaching the same people that it used to. Disney's recently made a relationship with Epic, and Epic is the company that distributes the game Fortnite. So you're seeing more and more Disney characters come into Epic and Fortnite's world in large part to try to get that audience for the future to buy a product. So I can't say that I'm terribly hot on Disney. I can't say that I'm terribly cold on it. Uh, they just raised their ticket prices again, which it'll work. Tesla, Boeing, Tesla and Boeing are going to highlight earnings this week. Um, Tesla's going to be an interesting one because, man, that's kind of a Civil War stock, right? Some people see it as a car company. Some people see it as a tech company. I, I don't think they have the robo-taxi te technology. That was embarrassing what they did a couple weeks ago when they showed the robo-taxi concept without any self-driving yet on the road. And yet Waymo has pulled off over 100,000 uh, paid rides a week in Los Angeles, Phoenix, and San Francisco. They've announced plans to push their robo taxi service into Austin as well as Atlanta. 15 years in the rearview mirror of doing this. Waymo's got 300 vehicles in San Francisco, 400 vehicles in other markets. 10. One of the big selling things on robo taxis now is privacy. You don't have to talk to someone, you don't have to listen to their music. I kind of like it. RoboTaxis are fun. Find me online at robotshow.com. Questions about Social Security? Check out the Social Security Retirement Guide at robblack.com. That's robblack.com. Powered by EP Wealth. Thanks for listening to the show. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial money, investing, and more. Anything that you want to talk about, we can talk about. One of the things that we talk about is what are you gonna do in retirement? I think it's important to try to be healthy because once your health goes, it doesn't come back. And uh, health, poor health is expensive. Costco's got gold bars and that's kind of interesting. When you actually look at them, they're not really gold bars. They're like gold fingernails. An ounce of gold's not that much. So the nation may have left behind the gold standard in 1971, but Costco shoppers have proven that gold is a red hot this month. Interesting, right? That Costco is getting people to come in to buy gold and Target's getting people to come in to buy Taylor Swift. Do you think Taylor Swift will be able to move the needle for Target this Christmas? Some people think Taylor Swift is Target's gold. The wildly popular Costco bouillon was introduced to the warehouse club 
last year via 24 karat one ounce bars. The product has flown off the shelves, raking in over 200 million per month in gold bar sales. Demand has been so great that the retailer has begun to offer platinum bars. A little bit tied towards inflation for sure. A little bit tied towards people fearful that the United States economy is going to overheat and create inflation. EBS Chief Investment Officer Solita Marcella said the gold price rally has further room to run, citing the potential for more interest rate cuts and worsening geopolitical tensions. If Israel goes after Iran, which it looks increasingly like they will, and again, my politics, not my strength, but a missile came from Lebanon last week that went after the head of Israel's home, private home. And I got to imagine they're not going to stand for that. You're on side. It wasn't us. But Israel's fighting a, a war on three fronts, Gaza and Lebanon and Iran. So is, will Taylor Swift be the gold bar for Target? I think she could pull a lot of people into those stores. Perplexity AI seeks valuation of about $9 billion. If you haven't done this yet, go to perplexity.ai and do a search. They have a product that's competing in search with Google and Microsoft and I, I guess potentially Apple, right? It's pretty magnificent what the results look like. Millionaires don't waste money on three things. I always love uh, financial stories like that. Uh, millionaires prioritize their health and they try to prolong their lives by avoiding low quality packaged food. Millionaires look to food products as close to the original source as possible. Um, Farmers markets, grocery stores, known for higher quality meats, fruits, and vegetables. I agree with that. Um, millionaires don't spend money on cheaply made products. Yeah, yeah. Studies show 50% of consumers think financial advisors cost too much money to debunk this. Um, I would say that everyone should consider... Working with a CFP, I work with a CFP. I feel very, very comfortable with it. I make what, in tax efficiency and tax planning, the cost of a financial planner. And then I get the investment advising for free. I get the state planning for free. <clears throat> it's all saved in my tax efficiency and tax planning, which is very complicated. It's knowing when to convert a Roth or an IRA to a Roth Knowing when to put money into charitable funds so as to lower your cost basis. Getting access to private equity, private credit, private real estate. Millionaires tend to completely replace broken or damaged parts of the house or issues with old vehicles instead of trying to put a, a Band-Aid fix on them. I found that one kind of interesting. When faced with a high-cost vehicle repair, for example, they would look to replace the vehicle altogether instead of paying for the fix. They rationalize this decision by pricing in peace of mind. There's something to be said for that, right? Netflix, their quarter was pretty spectacular. They topped subscriber targets as ad tier signups grow. It's when the luxuries become necessities, right? Netflix picked up 5.1 million streaming subscribers in the third quarter, topping the analyst expectations by more than 1 million, and said it expected higher customer growth around the holidays when the Korean drama Squid Game returns. I'm looking forward to it. My 13-year-old, pushing 14, he just uh, binged through the first season so that we could watch together the second season. No way the second season is as good as the first, right? 
the streaming giant Netflix said its ad supported service accounted for more than 50% of signups in the third quarter in countries where it's available. Wall Street had expected Netflix to bring 4 million subscribers from July through September. One. Pulled in over 5 million. That's slowing, though. They earned $5.40 per share in the quarter, above the expectations of $5.12. Operating margin hit 30% in the quarter compared with 22% a year earlier. 30. On the surface, Netflix is moving, trending in all the right directions. Financially, revenue and operating margins continue to increase and expenses are down. You can find out more about me at robblackshow.com. It's robblackshow.com. I'm Rob Black, talking all things financial. If you'd like yeah. to talk about working with a financial planner, drop me an email, rob at robblackshow.com. Big event coming up at, in November on real estate and what to do with it in your retirement. You can find out more by going to robblackshow.com. It's at the Elks Lodge in Palo Alto. Looking for potential strategies to enhance your real estate investments? Join Rob Black and CFP Chad Burton of EP Wealth Advisors, November 14th in Palo Alto, for an event exploring passive investment options with your real estate. They'll explore how 1031 exchanges into DSTs can offer opportunities for passive income and help alleviate property management challenges. They'll discuss the current real estate environment, trends in 1031 exchanges, options for real estate owners looking to diversify and how DSTs can likely enhance your investment strategy. If you have at least 500 k in investable assets, this free event is for you. Exploring investment options with your real estate. Thursday, November 14th, 6.30 to 8.30 at the Palo Alto Elks Lodge. Space is limited, so sign up today at robblackshow.com. That's robblackshow.com. This seminar is ideal for real estate investors and property investors looking to improve their real estate strategy. Sign up today online, robblackshow.com.